All right, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about a exchange, or we're gonna do an example of an exchange that lacks commercial substance, and then in this problem, there is a game. Remember that commercial substance means that when an exchange occurs, the future cash flow changes as a result of it. So, example would be, I exchange my old car for a new car. Well, obviously my future benefit changes because I can now use that car longer, okay? In this case, in this example, it lacks that commercial substance. So an example might be, you know, I moved to the Midwest and I need four wheel drive. I need four wheel drive because we've got snow here and I'm from California and we don't have snow. Well, I go out to the dealership or I go out to a friend out here in the Midwest and I say, hey, I have this car, it doesn't have four wheel drive. Um, you have this car, it does have four wheel drive and you're heading out to Florida where you don't need um, a four wheel drive, so let's exchange. Okay, our cars are very similar in nature and so we make the exchange. The only thing different is that I have four wheel drive uh, or my friend here has four wheel drive and I don't have four wheel drive, but everything considered, it still is gonna last us both X amount of time, uh, the same amount of time as it did before. So that's a situation where it lacks commercial substance. We're not getting any more benefit from it, we're getting the same amount of benefit, but maybe there's a feature that I need and he no longer needs or she no longer needs, okay? So example here, um, it's an exchange, it lacks commercial substance, and there may be a gain or loss. In this case, there's a gain. So, Mickey Mouse Inc. trades a used piece of equipment for a new one from Donald Duck Inc. The exchange lacks commercial substance, which means when they make the exchange, they're both getting the same uh, thing, really, at the end of the day. The used equipment had a book value of $45,000, so we got $45,000 from an original purchase price of $65,000 and then accumulated depreciation of $20,000. According to Beckett Services, the fair market value is $52,000. So, at the end of the day, I could sell it and get 52,000. In my books, it's 45. That's a gain because in my books it's 45, but I could sell it for 52, so I would have a gain there, okay? Now, Mickey Mouse also needs to pay $8,000 in cash. So really, at the end of the day, there's still no commercial, that still lacks a little bit of commercial substance because he's gonna make up the difference for, let's say, a little bit better product. Let's say they both are used equipment, but because this equipment has a few more things in it, um, Mickey Mouse is gonna have to pay $8,000 more, okay? Complete the journal entry for this transaction. So let's go through this, some of these calculations here. Some of this we've already seen before. So we're gonna take the fair market value of the equipment that's exchanged. So the fair market value is 52. And again, we're trying to find here in this scenario, the cost of, in this case, a uh, piece of equipment, okay? Cash paid would have been $8,000. So the cost of this piece of equipment is $60,000. Makes sense? Well, I could sell it for $52,000 on the street. I had to pay up another $8,000, so I would have gotten, let's say, $52,000 in cash uh, from selling it in the street. Then I got $8,000 of my own money that I've already had. I add that together. The cost of the equipment is $60,000 to Donald Duck Inc., okay? So, and in this case, in this example, there is no value here because it lacks commercial substance, which means, you know, typically this is done when one company exchanges an equipment with another company. So they don't really have a value on it and we have to calculate that value. So cost of this new equipment to the, to the mouse, $60,000. Now, we're gonna do this here. Now we can use the plug situation when we do the journal entries, but I, I wanna do this here so that you can get the gain and. Um, we won't have to worry about it later on. So, fair market value of the old equipment would be 52,000. So that's how much we could get for it. The book value of the old equipment was 45, which means we had a gain of $7,000, okay? Theoretically, you know, I gave up this piece of equipment um, that's worth 52, or I'm gonna get 52,000 out of the duck, um, and my book value of the old equipment is 45, so gain and disposal is $7,000. So the other question that we have to ask us is, what's the basis of this new equipment? Now, the way that we calculate basis of this new equipment is we take the fair market value of the new equipment. Well, the fair market value of the new equipment is what we're gonna put in the books 
um, of $60,000, okay? Okay, so that's the fair market value. Now we're gonna, less gain deferred. Now we didn't really talk about this, but I talked about it at the very beginning that if it lacks commercial substance, we're gonna defer the gain and defer the losses. Well, how much gain are we gonna defer? Which means that we're not gonna put it onto our financial statement. We're not gonna put $7,000 gain because it lacks commercial substance. So GAP says, do not put that gain in. So less the gain defer, we're gonna defer that gain. Now the topic of deferring is another, um, another place for it, but basically deferring means that we're gonna defer the gain until we get rid of this new piece of equipment that we received or used but new to us. Okay, so the cost of the semi really is 53,000, or cost of this equipment is really 53,000, okay? I know, it's already complicated. Fair market value plus cash played is really the cost, okay? But we're going to defer the gain. We're gonna defer 7,000 so we can't use the 60,000, and we're gonna see why we can't use the 60,000 when we do the journal entry. So we're gonna defer this gain here. All right, so the journal entry. We're gonna get a new piece of equipment. This new piece of equipment we're gonna put at 53. Why? We're gonna put 53 because we are going to defer the gain, okay? We're deferring $7,000 gain here, okay? If we're gonna defer it, we have to assume that it's not even there, okay? We're also gonna get rid, we talked about it in the last lesson, we have to get rid of the old stuff here, okay? So debit accumulated depreciation of the old equipment, okay, of $20,000. And we're going to credit the old equipment And the old equipment was on the books for 65, okay? And then cash, cash gave up 8,000 because we had to pay cash, so credit. Okay, we're done, okay? So in this case, because we're deferring the gain on the loss, we have to do a couple of things. We have to adjust the equipment cost, okay? We would have put it at 60,000 because that's really what it took us, but because we have to defer the gain, we, can't, we have to show it as if the gain was in existence, okay? So we're deferring the gain, okay? It's 53,000. We still got rid of our accumulated depreciation and equipment on the old equipment, and then we still booked our cash, okay? So if, now let's think of this if we didn't defer it. If we didn't defer it, equipment would be 60,000. So we have 60 plus 20. And then the old equipment would be 65 and eight. That means we would have had a gain of $7,000 because this is, if this increased by seven, something over here had to increase by seven. And that seven over here would have been that gain, okay? When we do eventually sell it, the equipment is now lower, which means then we would assume, the, uh, assume or uh, replace that gain, okay? Hopefully, because we defer the gain, we won't even have a gain later on. Um, but that's a story for another day. So this is an example that, uh, of a situation where we have an exchange, it lacks commercial substance, and there's a gain. Notice we, did, we had a gain on disposal, $7,000, but we're deferring it, and if we're deferring it, we no longer put the gain in here, which means we reduce the equipment price so that we can defer the gain. Defer in the gain, meaning that we're not gonna put it on our financial statements in this period, we're gonna, essentially put the gain when we sell this new piece of equipment. So that's an exchange that lacks commercial substance.